Lord Dung Ai, I just wanted to say. Guess I'll just go back to coughing. <coughs> 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 Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming at number 77, we have the coughing maniac known as Guo Huai. <laughs> and that's why I teased the coughing at the beginning of the video because Guo Huai is stricken with illness and every time he's talking, he's always coughing. So I had to tease at that a little bit. But before we jump into who he is and his changes and all that, let's go ahead and take a look at the rankings for this character. In the popularity poll, he received 441 votes out of a total of 75,000, and that put him in about 59th place. And then in the second popularity poll, he drops down to the 69th spot, and then in my personal rankings, Guo Hawaii is at 75th, which puts him in the 77th spot. Guo Hawaii, if you couldn't tell, he's a very sickly looking character. He's very, he gives you that feeling of he's, you know, constantly on the verge of dying but he's not he's been stricken with illness and uh, he's the only character in the game who has this weird illness and goes into battle with it guo Hawaii was a wei general who was once shaho yuan's major he was primarily stationed near hanjong and repelled the shu invaders from wei's western borders numerous times throughout his military career as a result he was known to be one of wei's most tenaciously reliable generals throughout his entire career as he was said to have earned one of the highest military promotions of his time as he started from the bottom ranks. Not even abandoning his post to save his kidnapped by local tribe's wife led to neither arrest or demotion of his rank by Sima Yi, who was top chancellor at the time. And after his death, he was succeeded by his own men, whom he trained to be as reliable as himself. Like I said, Guo Hai is a really uh, sickly looking character, and I never understood why. Doing a little more research into why that was, apparently Guo Hai was added, uh, first of all, for loyalty. So a lot of people in the Jin Dynasty uh, betrayed and had a hard time with loyalty in the Jin Dynasty itself. Xiao Ba, Zhang Hui, I believe even Zhu Ge Dan at one point. I'm not too sure about that, but so if anything, his loyalty is what exhausts his body. Though he was made to be the ill character of the cast, the producer wanted to make sure that his illness didn't actually impair his ability to fight and thus affiliated him with the heavy cannon. He feels it taxes Guo Hawaii while he uses it as if he entrusts his life into every strike. So that leads to a great segment to his weapon style. So in the first two games, he has the heavy cannon, like I mentioned earlier. And uh, it's a okay weapon. I don't, I mean, I understand why now, you know, looking further into it of why the, you know, the producers made it the way it was. I mean, he was a sick character, so he didn't really have the flexibility and the really, you know, energy to do all the stuff that normal people with normal weapons do. So they gave him the heavy cannon to contrast his uh, illness. But it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me why he was made the ill character. I couldn't find the reason why. I guess I just wanted him to be sick, but still have the ability to fight. So that's why they gave him the heavy cannon. There's not a lot of movement. He kind of just sits back and, you know, he shoots, I'm assuming, bullets out of it. I'm not really sure. Um, but it is one of the weapons when I first started playing Dynasty War 7, like, a long time ago. And uh, Ghoul Hawaii was added into the game. I, I wasn't really a big fan of it because because of how unrealistic it was during these times it's 200 ad and you got to get out of the heavy cannon just blistering people with it so uh, i wasn't really a big fan of it at all reading through and you know understanding why it is it makes sense i just i just don't agree with it but yeah, so yeah he had the heavy cannon for the first two games and then in the ninth game they gave him the exact same weapon as manchong and jia shang which is the shooting blade spears now again this weapon is all right to me um, honestly, the heavy cannon would probably be, would probably have been better for him. I mean, the shooting blade spear is okay. It still has the element of shooting. That's why it's called the shooting blade spear. So I guess he still retains a little bit of that. But I mean, I don't really like Guo Hawaii's weapon style. It's really fun to play with. Like you just mow down people with this like machine gun heavy cannon that can like explode. It's a little OP to be honest in the first two games. And then in Dynasty Wars 9, he gets the shooting blade spear, which is fine. I mean, it's... All right, but it's not my favorite weapon style. Definitely one of the least favorite to me. Just, just to me. Just have a, how close I am to the game and how I like the, you know the sword fighting, the spears, and you know axes, all that stuff that people actually use 
back during that time. So yeah, not much to complain about the weapon style. I just personally didn't like it myself. Now going on to his voice acting, uh, just real quickly, he didn't really have that. I mean, it wasn't really that big of a deal. I mean, his voice was the same for the first two, Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, and then in Dynasty Warriors 9, um, he gets a different one. But it's, it's, it's fine. I think his voice is just fine. Nothing too out of character for him. I think it fits him just fine. And let's go ahead and quickly cover his outfit as well. Again, he's only been in the game since Dynasty Warriors 7, so that's when he first got his playability, so he's only had, you know, three different outfit changes, and they look pretty much the same. I mean, he's pretty much had the same outfit the entire uh, series so far, so nothing to complain about there. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the next thing, which is relationships. So, Guo Hawaii has a lot of different relationships in this game. Of course, he has a relationship with Sima Yi, Sima Shi, and Sima Zhao. All three of them are, you know, leaders of this Jin Dynasty, starting off with Sima Yi before he gives it off to Sima Shi. And then when Sima Shi passes away, he gives it off to Sima Zhao. Now, Guo Hawaii is, is depicted dying for Sima Zhao. Uh, in the first two games. I'm going to go over that in a second on how those two were different. And then Dynasty Wars 9, they didn't really cover it. I didn't really see it at all. I was looking for it. I played through a couple of different stories to see if they would like mention it or something. It seems like they didn't really go over that part. He kind of just faded away and uh, passed away. So, but back on the relationship. So he, he had the relationship with Sima Yi towards the end of his story because uh, it's actually really interesting what happened with Guo Hawaii. Guo Hawaii married a younger sister of the Wei general Wang Ling, and uh, in one of the battles, Wang Ling started a rebellion in Shochun, and you actually get to play this battle in all the games, and uh, the rebellion ends up failing, and he gets captured, and then they put out an order to execute all family members associated with Wang Ling. Now, Guo Hawaii's wife was Wang Ling's younger sister, so it put him in a bind because, you know, he loved his wife, he had five children with his wife, it was very difficult for Guo Hawaii himself. In the game, uh, Guo Hawaii goes to Sima Yi himself and asks for a pardon for the wife. I will do anything that you ask, but I beg of you to please spare the life of my wife. Please. <coughs> and uh, because of his loyalty, because of his, you know, accolades and all the things that he's done for the Wei Kingdom and for Sima Yi and all their campaigns and stuff like that. Sima Yi in the game actually pardons him and that's actually what his ending is in Dynasty Warriors 9. Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, they don't really mention it. Uh, Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8, he actually gets killed before uh, that all happens. Sima Yi's actually dead before it as well. So uh, Dynasty Warriors 9, he that's what his ending is. It revolves around asking Sima Yi, hey, can you, you know, pardon my wife? You know, because it's, uh, you know, she's important to me, which is totally understandable. But according to the historical records, right? So Guo Hawaii's subordinates and thousands of tribal leaders came to ask Guo Hawaii to beg the imperial court to spare his wife. But he reluctantly refused. As his wife was being taken away, many people who lined the path to see her off shed tears, try to grab her hands, and even want to attack the guards to save her. And then Gu Hua's five sons came to see their father and kowtowed until their foreheads bled while begging their father to save their mother. So kowtowing is basically uh, it's a respectful thing that they do. They bow to where their heads touch the ground. So they were banging their heads so much that their heads started bleeding. And uh, Guo Hawaii, who was moved by his son's, you know, actions, changed his mind and ordered his subordinates to bring his wife back. So all the people went after the imperial censors on horseback, caught up with them, brought back Guo Hawaii's wife within a few days. And then Guo Hawaii then wrote a letter to Sima Yi and said, My five sons are willing to sacrifice their lives for their mother. If they lose their mother, I lose them too. Without my five sons, I will no longer exist. If I have violated the law by seizing back my wife from the imperial censors, I'm willing to see the emperor and take full responsibility for my actions. And then after reading this letter, Sima Yi made an exception for Guo Hawaii's wife and pardoned her. So according to history, he also did the exact same thing. But instead of um, him going directly to Sima Yi, he sent a letter after the crazy actions by all the people that supported Guo Hawaii. But after reading the letter, Sima Yi made an exception for Guo Hawaii's wife and pardoned her, just like in the game. But it's kind of crazy that there's so many people that who are under Guo Hawaii that were so dedicated to him and uh, didn't want to see him hurt or, you know, devastated because of the death of his wife. It's kind of crazy and uh, it's a little um, 
it's a little interesting. Maybe it was pretty interesting to to find that out about Guo Huai. So Sima Yi, he has he didn't really have that much relationship with Sima Shi. He kind of just did what he wanted, you, you know, to help out. And then he had a stronger relationship with Sima Zhao. He's very sympathetic to Sima Zhao and has no regrets about giving his life for him um, in the Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8 game. So it's kind of crazy that he had a very close relationship with Sima Yi. And then Sima Shi kind of, I mean, he didn't, he just did what he asked him and stuff like that. They didn't, they didn't really have that close relationship. And then with Sima Zhao, he was a lot closer to him, even risking his life to save him in Dynasty Warriors 7. It was kind of crazy. But Guo Huai, he really couldn't. <coughs> My lord. Are you okay? I have always walked a fine line between life and death. I fear that the time has come to finally cross that line. <coughs> I'm so sorry. This... This is all my fault. Stand against your fate and keep moving forward. <coughs> ah, if only I could have seen you. <coughs> no. <coughs> so those are the three relationships with the um, Jin leaders. Uh, he also had a relationship with uh, Zhao Ba, Zhao Yuan, and Zhang He. Zhao Yuan is the cousin of Cao Cao. He's one of the original Wei people. I mean, he's been around since the beginning. And Guo Huai, like I said in the beginning, was his subordinate. So, of course, he had a close relationship with him. So, while in service during Cao Cao's reign, uh, Zhao Yuan cheered him up when he doubted his lord's purpose to take Han Zhang. So, when they were originally marching on Han Zhang to attack it, uh, Zhao Yuan, you know, was kind of coming up to him with optimism and courage, and it led to Guo Huai admiring Zhao Yuan, and they had a closer bond. So Guo Huai had a close relationship with Zhao Yuan after he died, and his son became of age to join the army and uh, help the Wei Kingdom fight. Guo Huai also established a relationship close to him because of his previous relationship with his father, and uh, after Zhao Ba is actually one of the people that uh, betrayed the Jin Dynasty. When he left, Guo Huai had mixed feelings. He couldn't forgive Xiao Ba for turning his back on his father, yet he simultaneously grieves the irony of having to kill him for it. Um, it's uh, He had a hard time with it, and it's actually depicted in one of the cutscenes in Dynasty Warriors 7, I believe, and uh, it's actually what led to Guo Huai's death. Take a look. Come on, Guo Huai. Do you really have it in you to kill me? That is the intention. Hard as it is. Then get on with it. What? I must say... That was a most unexpected turn of events. Shu, cannot afford to lose you. I will hold them off. Lord Guo Lord Guo Huai. You're dead. So yeah, it was pretty crazy the way Guo Huai died in Dynasty Warriors 7. He also has a death scene in Dynasty Warriors 8, which was a little different, um, but he ends up dying in that one as well. And finally, the last close relationship, Guo Huai, I think, I mean, it could have been a little, it might not have been as close as I think it was, but I would have to say the last close relationship he has was with Zhang He, and that's because Zhang He was also under the command of Zhao Yuan. So, of course, being fellow officers under the same commander, um, you know, they're going to get used to each other, and uh, 
you know, become friends and all that stuff. There was actually a cutscene where they shared uh, words with each other. So it seems like they had a different relationship versus some of the other officers because of how comfortable he was to talk to them. But not too much there to dick around. But yeah, the Sima brothers, he had a really close relationship with, or at least Sima Zhao, Sima Yi, uh, Xiao Yuan, Xiao Ba, and uh, of course his wife. I mean, that's pretty much it for the relationship. And that's pretty much all I have for Guo Hawaii. So just to recap, uh, weapon style, I don't think it was that great. I think the heavy cannon, first of all, is a little way too OP. It can take out hundreds. I mean, you can hit people from just stand. You don't even have to move. It's crazy how powerful the uh, heavy cannon is. And then uh, the shooting blade spear is not really a fan of it. I used it when I played with Man Chong. It was all right, but um, it still has the element of shooting stuff out of his of, of the weapon itself so he still has that ability but it's like you know i would prefer the heavy cannon over the the shooting blade spear but outfits fine voices are fine oh we forgot to cover his deaths so we already kind of went over it with uh what i said earlier but uh the game depicts him dying in the battle of hanjong there's another one in dynasty warriors 8 where he just uh, he gets ambushed and you have to save him and then he comes out and he's kind of like uh, being held up by a soldier and they get him over to Sima Zhao and he ends up passing away right there. But both of the death scenes were caused by Jiang Wei. He was shot in the back with an arrow as you saw earlier. And then in the eighth one, he died from an ambush. In the ninth one, they don't go over how he died. They kind of just skipped over it and uh, they didn't really cover it. Like I said, I played a couple different stories to see if I could trigger it, but there was uh, no cutscene and no events around his death. So I'm assuming he died peacefully. According to history, he died during Sao Mao's reign in 255. It doesn't specify how he died, but he does pass away. So he's number 77. Number 76 will be coming out. I'm going to try to be pushing these out a little more quickly now. Uh, I'm trying to get as many as I can done before the end of the year. Hopefully be done with it by the end of the year so I can do some couple other things with the series and then be ready for Dynasty Warriors 10. But that's all I really have for Goa Hawaii. Let me know what you guys think about in the comment section. If you guys like Goa Hawaii, what do you think about him? Who are you guys looking forward to? For me to do a lot of big names that we haven't even got to yet of course we're really low on the list so i'm gonna try to get through these as quickly as i can so that way we can get to the more exciting characters but uh that's all i have for go hawaii if you guys enjoyed it definitely appreciate it. like comment or subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching everyone hey.